Mars is a mysterious planet that has always fascinated people on Earth. We still have plenty of unanswered questions. For instance, we know there is water on Mars, but only in the form of ice and vapor. Water can't exist on Mars as liquid because the atmosphere has become too thin. Oxygen and hydrogen, the building blocks of water, are being lost into space. We also know that Mars has some exotic weather, like massive dust storms, similar to those on Earth, which are more brief and localized. On Mars, the dust storms can engulf the entire planet and rage on for months. Our science mission is to produce the first ever truly global picture of the Martian atmosphere. This is the first holistic study of the Martian climate and how the layers of its atmosphere fit together. We will model the connections between all the different components of the Martian climate, including all the temperatures, winds, dust, and clouds. Scientists on Earth will use the data that will be sent by the probe to build a complete dynamic picture of the Martian climate. This is something that has never been seen before. Our data will give the international science community a deeper and richer understanding of the Martian atmosphere. First, this will help us to model Earth's atmosphere and how it will evolve with time over millions of years. Second, it will allow us to analyze newly discovered planets far across the galaxy to be able to determine if there is life on it. We will share the data freely with more than 200 universities and research institutes around the world. This is our contribution to human knowledge. We want the orbiter to arrive at Mars in 2021, the UAE's 50th anniversary. Earth and Mars align their orbits once every two years. So we have a very short launch window in July 2020. We have to be ready by then. There will be no second chance. It's a race against time. The spacecraft will be launched in the nose cone of a rocket. The rocket must exceed 40,000 kilometers per hour to break out of Earth's gravity. The set of boosters and rocket stages will fire up and fall away in turn. It will fire its thrusters and accelerate to 100,000 kilometers per hour. Then the spacecraft will separate from the launcher. It will unfold the solar panels and point the spacecraft toward the sun to charge the batteries. The journey across the solar system will take around seven months. As it travels, the spacecraft needs to figure out its location. There is no GPS in deep space. So the spacecraft will use star trackers to navigate using patterns of constellations. This is similar to the way our ancestors used the stars to find their way in the desert and at sea. When the spacecraft gets close to Mars, it'll have to use its thrusters as brakes. It'll need to slow down to 14,000 kilometers per hour to enter orbit. This will be a tense time at mission control in the UAE. The thrusters must fire for 30 minutes at precisely the right time. If anything goes wrong, the spacecraft will pass Mars and the mission will fail. But we can't control the spacecraft in real time from Earth. When it's so far away, signals can take more than 14 minutes to arrive. Its brain will be sophisticated enough to make its own decisions. Look back in history. The Middle East was once a powerhouse for innovation and science. Muslim civilizations were once pioneers in mathematics and astronomy. This will be the first ever Arab Islamic mission to another planet. The Emirates Mars mission will have a major impact and a legacy here in the UAE. That's because of the approach that we took to planning and building this mission. The easy way to do it would have been to go and buy technologies and expertise from big space agencies and companies. We decided to do it ourselves, to build it ourselves, and to learn with our partners along the way. This mission is managed by a 100% Emirati team. Emirati universities and research institutions will work on the science. That way we get to build the knowledge and keep the skills. This mission will be the catalyst for a new generation of Arab scientists and engineers. It will be an anchor project for the space and science sector here in the UAE. That's one reason I'm so proud and excited to be part of the mission as an Emirati and as an Arab. It's very symbolic 
for an Arab and Muslim country to launch an interplanetary mission. We have taken a step beyond just looking at the skies. We are going there. I think it will change the way young people look at their region. It will help us think positively and see hope and opportunity. If a small young Arab nation is able to reach Mars, truly anything is possible.